Sam Himata Vishwa Sharma, who has joined us for this first session post lunch. This promises to be a very, very special session with someone who minces no words, the Chief Minister of Assam, Himantu Bishwa Sharma. And uh, this, of course, is the inaugural NBF Conclave titled Future of News. Up next, we're going to be having a discussion on the future of news in India with the perspective of one India, many voices. When we talk about one India, many voices, it's impossible, remember, to forget the role of the vernacular press in the freedom struggle. The regional languages played the role of informing people and stirred in them across the country a sense of Indian nationalism which was steeped in an anti-colonial British sentiment. Today as well, over a century has passed but mi misinformation of course continues to thrive. However, through this the cancerous proliferation of regional news media, which is also happening across the length and breadth of the nation. It has become very important to trace a common link, bypassing all editorial differences to that common ground of local reportage and breaking stories in the interests of the nation. It's very, very important to re-emphasize today that this conclave is broadcasting in over 40 channels, not just in the north of the country, where we are physically coming to you from, but to the west, to the east, and to the south, and in multiple regional languages as well, not just English and Hindi. To set the tone and tenor for the next session, let's please have an AV before we call the CM of Assam and Mr. Arnab Goswami on stage. News has no barriers. News cannot be limited to big media conglomerates operating in big mega metros. News media has embraced domains and genres with ease and perfection. Editorially diverse and unrivaled, Indian news is made up of many voices. I know as a minimum that Assam should be in the top five state of the India and India should be the world strongest, mightiest state in the world. That's my philosophy. An outspoken leader and believer in the India story. Joining us now at the NBF National Conclave is the Chief Minister of Assam, Himanta Biswa Sarma, for a fireside chat on future of news. One India, many voices. May I now invite Mr. Arnab Goswami for a fireside chat with the dynamic Chief Minister of Assam, Dr. Himanta Biswa Sharma. Mr. Sharma's work in Assam and efforts to instill a sense of nationalism have inspired leaders across the Northeast. Mr. Sharma will tell us how each of these voices of the vernacular media speak the development and people stories of India and the challenges they face in this age of misinformation. Please, Mr. Uh, Dr. Hemant Vishwa Sharma and Mr. Arnab Goswami on stage. And as an Assamese, Makhub Gaurabhanurov Kaurisuje, Mr. Arnab Goswami is here with our very own Dr. Himanta Vishwa Sharma. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have a proper round of applause for Himanta Vishwa Sharma. Not only one of the most popular, dynamic, controversial, but also one of the best performing chief ministers in the country today. We're very happy and proud to have you with us, sir. Thank you very much. Please, sir. Please, thank you. We deliberately kept you for a post-lunch session. No. You know why, Imantuta? So that everybody become bored after the lunch. Everybody <laughs> become sleepy. <laughs> no, because two things. You wake up people. Secondly, you get the audiences back. That's the reason. And you know that you've become a viral sensation over the last few months increasingly. Have you noticed any clip with some of his comments gets the highest traction? Is there any doubt about it? Any doubt? I think, huh? I think, I think, I think that is for my broken English and broken Hindi. <laughs> <laughs> your broken English and Hindi? No, no, you're perfectly fine. You're perfectly fine in both. But, uh, but great to have you with us. Thank you so much, Arnav. So, Emantada, the News Broadcasters Federation. First, I want to just tell you why we had this federation, because we felt, and I keep repeating it, we felt the need to delutianize the Indian media. We felt almost frustrated that 
four or five channels so nobody watches and two or three websites claim they dominate the media landscape in the country and we have worked very very hard to get 78 channels under one platform you you all of you politicians run coalition governments but you will never have as large and as functioning a coalition as this federation but you are you are almost acting like atal bihari basprey 78 <laughs> 78 news channel and still it is going strong uh, but we are going to last a long time i i think you you should and you must <laughs> thank you but you know i want to get you on this thought you are from assam you are now center stage in national politics. How do you view the media in this country? A broad question to start with. How do you view the media landscape in India from where you are, from where you have been and have come, and as you look towards the future of this country? You see, uh, our country is going... Can you just hold the mic a little closer? Yeah. Our country is going through an interesting political phase. There are people who are trying to strengthen country. There are people who are trying to make India a Vishya Guru again. But there are people within the country who wants to see India is a, as a very, very weak country. Even in media, I see both the trends. One part of media who is strongly advocating the cause of India, cause of nationalism, uh, Bharatiyata everywhere. But there are media who believe that covering China is more important than covering India's sacrifice of Indian army. There are media who believe that how much China has advanced towards India wrongly, you give focus on that. But do not make high headline that how much Indian army is doing, how much they are sacrificing for protecting India's sovereignty. You don't give the headline when India become the India's economy suppress your uh, even British economy who ruled us for hundreds of years. But you give publicity when Indian uh, rupee for some reason weakened by maybe by uh, 50 paisa, 1 rupee on that day. I mean, there are people who are constantly opposing the growth of India as a world superpower. So, what I see in politics, what I see in intellectual world, the sharp division, I see that in media also. But there are those who say that the media is not being critical enough. They say that you should instead, instead of talking, for example, about the strengthening of the dollar, you should talk about the collapse of the rupee. Now, it can be a subjective thing whether the rupee is collapsed or not and how much it is because of global trends, American capital, whatever is happening there. But they say you're not being critical enough no, no. of Why? this government. No. And, and, and more so, since there isn't enough an active opposition in this country, the role of the media as the opposition becomes more critical. First of all, I don't think that media, uh, somebody has voted media to be the voice of opposition. I think that media's role should be to promote India, irrespective of political party. But today, certain media, in the name of opposing Prime Minister Modi, actually they are opposing the country. Even somebody got gold prize in uh, gold in Olympic, they don't want to promote that. Uh, that uh, pride moment for the country also because they feel that it, it might ultimately give some credit to Narendra Modi also. So, in my view, that media must promote India, must promote Vartiata, and should not be influenced by Western thought, Western culture, and Western type of that no, no, media should play this role, media play that role. Nobody has defined ki media ko birudhi ka role play karna hai. Kis ne bola? What is this western type in your view? Can you elaborate? I mean, there are a western democracy has set certain standard that how people, institutions should behave. We should not follow that. We should follow the standard which for long India has developed as our own. During the freedom movement, Indian press supported freedom of India. Today, 
there is a another freedom movement going on in Assam because in India because we want to be get freedom from poverty we want to be we want to get freedom from illiteracy we want to promote India as a superpower uh, in my view Indian media should aggressively from promote Bharatiyata, India's nationalism. In, are you actually indirectly trying to tell the media to promote the BJP? They, they can, if BJP no, is that the, is that the if, attention? If, is that the intention? No, no. If BJP is promoting Indianness, if BJP is promoting nationalism, then what is harm in Are you trying to BJP? appropriate nationalism politically? No. I mean, it is all about how you think. Today, the country has banned PFI. Everybody realized that PFI is an element which, which pose challenge to India's integrity. Now, what is harm in supporting that move of government? Because whether in BJP or Congress, we want that PFI should have been banned long back. So, if today the government of the day has banned PFI, no, but your, then uh, media should be unequivocal. No, but earlier, for the last six months to one year, the argument was you were not targeting the PFI, you were trying to indirectly target the minority community. That is the problem. Indian media should be with the country. Indian media... Is, anti, is being anti-PFI being for country? In my view, yes. As long as you write against PFI, you are contributing to the growth of the country. You should write right and left against the communal forces. Then you become actually Indian. I don't want that you should write against... If somebody is doing corruption, definitely you write. But if somebody is posing threat to the country's sovereignty, then you must work in tandem with the government. Are you putting politics first or nation first? I think politics cannot be first. Nation has to if, be first. If, if it is not politics first and if it is nation first, then you are from Assam, I am from Assam. For the longest time in Assam, it has always been the issue has been the anti-foreigners agitation. One minute, one minute. It's been the anti-foreigners agitation, right? But when your government says bring in the CA, right? When, when, when your government says bring in the CA, change the legislation, you are saying that Hindus from Bangladesh should come, but they are also foreigners. This changes the full premise of the same student's agitation with which you, with which you have been associated yourself. I have answered this question to you in the last Republic Summit also, that India as a nation has a historical responsibility towards the persecuted Hindus of the world. Hindu doesn't have any address except India. So the problem in Assam, we can resolve that whether Assam has a great share of the burden, that we can resolve in the country. But as an Indian, no one can deny the rights of persecuted Hindu to come back to their own motherland. That you cannot deny. But this line you have taken for the last two or three years. I think I, ha I am stand by that line for last, uh, from the day I started politics. If you see my uh, assembly speech when I was in Congress also, I strongly advocate that line. Can, can Hindu go to Arab? Can Hindu go to Pakistan? Can Hindu go to certain other country? Hindus has to come here. All media has to work with government in that, that on those cases. If you oppose CA, ultimately you are telling what? That persecuted Hindus should not have, should not come back to India. Rather, they should change their religion in Pakistan. No, I am saying on the basis of religion, you can't give entry into a country. I think India has, India is a country which has developed on the culture and ethos of Sanatan. You can't deny on the culture and ethos of culture and ethos of Sanatan Dharma. You can't deny that Hindu. It, it was a Hindu at Hindu tradition. It was a Hindu civilization, and you can't deny that India is today a secular country because in, in our constituent assembly, the Hindu thought process has taken over. But you and I are from a state which has, you are heading a state which is believed to have more than 35% uh, Muslim but, population. Are you not isolating them when you say that? No, no. When are you, you not say, isolating no, them? No. I don't think that Indian Muslim has any problem because Indian Muslim also knows that till Mughal comes to India, India, India was a Hindustan, India was a state based on Hindu culture and thought. So how can I write the history completely different?
you are a son of Colonel Manuranjan Goswami. Now, how you can deny that? So, whatever may be the politics, uh, political context, everybody has to say that India was, India's destiny was saved by our great sages, our great Vedas, Upanishads for 5,000 years. Thereafter, Mughal but came. But that is your political line. No, thereafter Mughal comes, that is also it, part of your history. But in the context of today's panel, this is a media event, that, the, that is a line a politician can take. It is not a line the media can take because the moment, allow me to complete. I think, I think media, media will write history differently. That no, Be no. Beda was not uh, born in India, Upanishad was not written that's in not, India. That's not what I'm saying. So what, I, what line media will take? I am trying take? to say that the line that you are taking Mr. Sharma is great and I'm sure this audience, lot of people will applaud for you. But the, but the, but the media cannot take that line. The, Problem, can, or rather I am playing devil's problem, advocate with you, problem, how can the media take that line? Problem with the western media or so called Indian media influenced by western thought, they think that India has born in 1947. They did not realize that India is a country with the 5000 years of civilizational thought and civilizational process. They think that country has born just in 1947. That was the basic issue and I strongly believe you, you, in the name of criticizing Prime Minister Modi, don't criticize India's growth story. Don't dilute the achievement of Indians. Don't do that. That is what my advice to the media. No, no, you're talking about the media. By the way, when you talk about nation and nationalism, your friend, your friend, you know which one? Yes. Which one? Who is taking great trouble nowadays in walking the street? <laughs> I mean, I, I am clear about my friend and foe. <laughs> it was just, I was checking. I was checking. No, no, but, but, but your friend does not, the believes and he actually went to a foreign university and said India has never been a nation at all. That's he said, he said, and, and I was appalled. How can an Indian politician go outside India and say my country has never been a nation? No, but he said it was a gift of the British. India never existed as a nation before the British gifted it to us. And then if you saw a young bureaucrat corrected him and said, you don't know about Chanakya, you don't know about Janpads, you don't know about nationalism in this country. But that's the... That's the problem. So, so you no, don't blame the media no, for no, it. You should blame up, your friend. No, Arnab, I don't want to blame my friend because election is in Gujarat. He is working in Andhra Pradesh. I don't want to blame him because, because that, is, that is his USP of thinking. So, the problem is that this country has born, according to me, in 5000 years back. Sanekka spoke and in detail about India, Bharat. There are problems with various media groups and various Western influenced Indians. They think that India has born as a country in 1947. They think that this is written in constitution. But the same kind of people has written constitution in India and the same kind of people written constitution in Pakistan. But the people, those who has written constitution for India, they, they were Hindus. So they have produced a secular constitution. The other people, they were fundamentalists, so they produced a constitution which is in nature of full fundamentalist thought. So today India is a secular country. Today India respect everyone because of our civilizational thought process. In 1962, when, when the Chinese crossed and when they went through Nefa, and were on the borders and almost entered Assam. Nehru went on radio, I think, and he said, my heart goes out to the people of Assam. Which means the Prime Minister of India at that time almost gave up Assam or was willing to give up without a fight. That is one situation. And the same media at that time and even now says, no, you know, strategic mistakes, etc., but has never quite blamed Nehru for it. Now you put this to the present context of Doklam. When the Chinese tried to get the heights and when we moved the guns, 
and when we outstared them and when mr doval actually met the chinese equivalent of the national security advisor bargained with him and got them to back off we see the change in approach and yet it is yet it is that the narrative in india has has not quite changed or nobody's quite i mean i can say that i'm i'm speaking for a lot of the media they still find mistakes in the government's handling of its china policy so i would i would like your view on that both from the point of view of assam your state and nationally uh, and in just, the context of the discussion that we are having i'll i'll just go to 1962 for a brief please, while please please i have seen that nehru's speech completely nehru in that speech he said that countrymen now we are losing battles everywhere we losing but don't worry we will win one day so uh, you must read the entire speech that is more more dangerous than what you have quoted he said openly on the news openly on that broadcast he said that as of now we are losing everywhere but don't worry there will be time will come one day we will win so that was the exact meaning of his speech i am quoting quoting him but today when india it is not about bjp or somebody today india's army is basically fighting with chinese army i to i they are defending their territory instead of media speaking about that some media will say then an order inquiry what is going on so i am of the view that there are media who knowingly unknowingly trying to basically trying to strengthen the views of opponents opponents of the country not the opponents of the bjp that is why i feel you need media now who irrespective of political party support the cause of nation without being critical about india now the assumption is you are not a, you, you you don't expect neutrality I, the, I you don't no. expect new. In, in, I am constantly Mene, coming back to it. Are you against a neutral I, media? I I I do not support neutrality because in this world can, people cannot be neutral. You have to support India. Who who can be neutral? You tell me. You as a human, you have to have a choice. You go to vote, so you have to vote somebody. So how can you be neutral? In your mind, you support something. So I do not believe. that neutrality is the way i believe you have to support unequivocally the cause of india because for next 20 years if you keep on supporting india then india will be super and power. the same view of yours that neutrality is not possible applies to media also i i are you are you saying that, you, uh, that the, are you, you saying that the media cannot be neutral no, if you on a when you spoke about tukre tukre gang somebody was supporting that game that those people where is the neutrality you have supported the cause of the country somebody has supported the cause of those people look look they are, they are becoming victims so what is that so nobody is neutral the question is somebody in the name of opposing prime minister modi today unknowingly they are opposing india that should not happen you be strongly support india you be with the india and you can see that next 20 years india will be a superpower you you but i do not I, i let me have a rider you have a free choice to criticize any politician whenever they do things wrong to the country but when it comes to india versus pakistan india versus china or when it comes about india support india there i don't want neutrality no these are very sharp sharp views that that you have but can you are basically making a case for a nationalist media if i am not mistaken exactly i am for a nationalist media i believe if next 20 years everybody support cause of india india will be respected in the world scenario the way today many people respect america or china give me bullet points what are the three or four things which you are saying is the cause of india which needs to be supported no, i think when it comes to fundamentalist condemn it equivocally then don't talk about liberty because once liberty don't talk about liberty liberty of those people because if you advocate liberty of one people who is hand in glove with terrorists then 
ultimately that will be responsible for killing hundreds of innocent after five this, years. This includes supporters of terrorists. I mean, I strongly believe that people who are opposing this country, for them, the concept of liberty should not but be... Some will say that is your subjective view. You will, you will lumpenize your political opponents as, as I mean, anti-national. I mean, I mean, you see, when it comes to PFI, they are not contesting election against BJP. So how can they be my political opponent? The problem is with their own thought process. The thought process is against the country. India has a constitution. You will say there should be a law of Sharia. Now this is opposed to your constitution. That is opposed to your ethos. That is opposed to your culture. But yes, within the constitution you can talk about secularism. That is a whole, wholly different ball game. So when it comes to constitution and the people who are opposing constitution, then you cannot be with them. When there are people who are opposing country with certain thoughts which is alien to this country's civilization, then you have to but oppose Mr. them. Mr. Asaduddin Owesi says that he is for the nation, but he feels that you are anti-Muslim, anti-minority, and that in I, the guise I'll, of nationalism, that is your political goal. I'll, I'll say he is anti-Hindu. If he is anti, I am anti-Muslim, I will say you are anti-Hindu. So in this country there is a fashion, no, no, you are anti-Muslim. But there should be a counter fashion also. Brother, you are also anti-Hindu. Then people will not speak about who is anti-Hindu, anti-Muslim. People will start speaking who is for India and, and against India. The other thing, the view about people like you, and I hope you don't mind all this, I'm asking you straight, I'm taking some liberty with you. You can. Yes. <laughs> I can. But the feeling is that you and, 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 and especially the core leaders of your party, your nationalism is at the cost of federalism. And this is a federation, Imantada. This is a federation of, of states. And, and by the way, your friend says we were never a nation. We it's are a, only a federation of states. A union of states. Sorry a union to, of states. Yes, story to right, with the union, with the union. State, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, is your nationalism, and all this is extremely relevant in the context of the ongoing debates on and about the media. I pride myself on the fact that today in this session and after this session, I was telling my, my senior Prokhanto Rajguru and then Zari Hussain is here. You have anchors from other channels, regional channels all coming. They are fantastic. I am proud of them. Is your nationalism accommodative enough to allow the birth, creation, continuance, encouragement of an aspirational regional identity as well? Or are you going to annihilate the regional identity, which is the kind of positioning which is happening? You know how it is in Tamil Nadu now, there's an ongoing debate about how you are a threat to the, to the, to the identity. I mean, uh, you know, uh, no, Tamil identity. Uh, my, so I my, want your response to My that. whole view is, is when you talk to Tamil language, it is not only the language of Tamils, it is also an Indian's language. Tamil is also, Tamil will also a language for Assamese people. Yes. So when you talk about Assamese language, it is also a language for Tamil people. We have to create the environment of this country that every regional language are the trad carry tradition of this Bharat birth. Yes. You have to create that psychology in our country that development of Assam means also development of Tamil Nadu. You have to, when a Tamilian, a Tamil boy gets an Olympic medal, there must be jubilation in Assam also. So federalism means that it cannot be a, basically we are states within the country. And we must remember we are Indian first then we have our regional identity. You strengthen your regional identity, but not at the cost of Bharat. You have Coming to back to that again and again, you, it's like a recurrent theme in everything that you are saying here today. And you also, you are a rider, you are, you are among the breed of politicians now who are now coming, a new breed of politicians who say we are unapologetically and openly nationalist. That is at the core of our identity. I am not asking you what is the role of the nationalist media. I want to know 
what is legitimate criticism and what do you consider illegitimate criticism no. you have said criticism is allowed but you are going to add a rider to it no that you, i will allow legitimate criticism no, no, it, this difference who defines very, that does himanta bishwa sharma no, define no. that this difference is very simple you don't have to analyze that you criticize narendra modi but don't criticize rafael deal don't That's criticize the, don't, rafael don't deal. criticize rafael because if you criticize rafael and postpone acquisition of rafael by the indian air force indirectly you are helping whom you are helping your enemy so there must be a distinction in your criticism do not criticize the country criticize individual but today when you want to criticize a individual actually you are criticizing country no no this country has achieved nothing in last 10 years why you want rafael you talk about poverty but these are two distinguished thing you need to eradicate poverty at the same time you need rafael rather you need fourth generation aircraft for the indian air force so in the name of criticizing is your governance beyond criticism if you no, if no, is again, your is your running of the country your running of the state are you beyond criticism no, do you come again, with an assumption i am i am i am very very simplistic on that you can criticize himanta bishwa sharma you can criticize arnab goswami but in the process you don't demoralize the indian army that's the different you you have to draw that finer line that okay we'll criticize up to this level but if we criticize further more then indian air force but will the, be as a media person i'll tell you the, the criticism is that you're not sharing enough information your government the, the argument is that you're I mean, being opaque you're not sharing enough I mean, information uh, i mean you know a, you're not accessible enough I mean, you built a wall no no a a government should call certain people give them breakfast and divulge all details about indian army so that kind of transparency you want who are you brother why i have to divulge you about the indians defense secret so that's the kind of no you're difference. taking an extreme case out there you're, no, no, that's I, not what i meant no no i am i am i am on extreme my line of thinking is extreme how can you say that no, as a politician I, you're I mean, saying you're extreme i mean i mean i i have right to speak i am saying so simple yeah, tell me one thing you don't, simple, don't worry about it no, when no, you say things like this that i my is, line of thinking no, no, is extreme very simple thing you criticize every individual you scrutinize the lifestyle of individual you scrutinize the political thought of that individual you criticize party you go for post mortem of bjp all fine but do not criticize the country do not criticize the bharat when there is a doklam you have to support bharat you cannot support indirectly china you cannot meet chinese ambassador during that critical period so that are that are the finer distinction media has to draw i'll take two or three questions from the audience now imantada okay any questions for imanta bishwa sharma i see a lot of hands go up okay we're going to take two or three questions out there can the mic be rolled up can the mic be rolled up quickly please who should we uh, go ah, to first okay. one yes move yes. among move among the audience quickly so mr sharma has made this unapologetic argument for a nationalist media which is very interesting in the context of our federation particularly i see one hand there yes sir go ahead uh himanta da we appreciate your nationalism and patriot patriotism however my question is very uh, specific you are doing a lot of work to modernize madrasas in assam now let me know if the muslims are supporting you if they are with you are they assisting you this is very important because no muslim has come on the roads i mean against you thank you okay uh, today morning we arrested four more pfi total pfi we arrested in assam now stood at 40 but there is no a murmur of protest in assam <laughs> we have since complete architecture of madrasa education in assam we have closed down 700 madrasa in assam no protest from assam's muslim community i keep on visiting assam's muslim area there are lot of euphoria now there are many discussion people are talking people are speaking openly that we want to make we want to actually uh, see our daughters and uh, sons as a doctor and engineers people are i think people in assam at least the muslim community is greatly appreciating our thought process 
we, we, don't, we have not seen any kind of protest in Assam. <coughs> we see some protest in the certain media, yeah. but we don't see protest on the ground of, in, the, uh, in, the, okay. in Assam. We take one more question for Himanta Bishwa Sarma, who's yeah. got the mic. Can you stand up sir. please sir, so we can okay. see you there. Sir, you said that uh, criticize the individual, not the objective. Like you say criticize Modi ji, but don't criticize Rafael. But uh, you see, if you are only criticizing the individual and not object, then uh, what do you say about corruption because after individual is doing corruption and poverty is coming from out of that corruption. So how you can uh, justify that don't criticize the things, criticize only individual. When one, one, Indian one. Air Force clarified that Rafael is the need of our and in Rafael deals, we have maintained complete transparency. Then debate should stop there. If you keep on debating thereafter also, you are basically demoralizing a cause, cause of the country. Okay, okay. No, no. That's my view. I mean, I, my Hello. view is, as long as politician says that this is a transparent deal, don't believe. But the moment your armed forces say who are going to lay down their lives or uh, lives fighting for the country, then you have to stop. Well, we appreciate the fact so that... So you have to stop somewhere, otherwise this country will be weakened. Yeah. I mean, I am, I am saying whether it is a Rafael nuclear weapon, fourth generation things. Uh, once army says yeah. that this has been done transparently, no hanky-panky, we stand by okay. that, then debate should end. Okay, now um, that I, includes Rafael. I, I will, I will, I will, I will close it at this with just one last comment. I have observed Mr. S Mr. Sarma's political career for a long time. He's consistently on this one line today. I think he's come with a thought that he wants to push for a nationalist media. You made that your consistent theme, consistent theme throughout. And I think I appreciate the fact that he stayed through with the true and true to the theme throughout his presentation. So, Arnab, I, I only say one thing. India's contact with Pragya or Gyan for 5,000 years. Yeah. This Western media we used to know for 100 years. So do something which we have done consistently for 4,900 years. Do not be influenced by Western media. Well, this, this federation is completely true only to the Bharatiya spirit. And I, I think I, you know that and I thank you very much for it. Himanta Bishwa Sharma, it's fantastic having thing. you. simple thing. Today, today, why you are popular among the masses of the country? Because you have the capacity, you have the courage to speak about Tukre Tukre gang. You have not cared how much in British newspaper will criticize you. How much America will criticize you? It doesn't matter. You? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the so, least to us. The way all the media should follow a strict nationalist cause, India will be superpower in 20 years. There will be no poverty. There will be nothing. Fantastic. Do not weaken the country from inside. Uh, thank you, Himant Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for a fantastic presentation in our post-lunch session. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you.